This is what I'm feeling like. Da, 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 da. Let me tell you what I'm feeling like. Da, 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 da. Yo, yo. What up, though, people? Like to welcome you back to the Keep the C Note podcast. As always, I am your boy Brown. Shout out to everybody that's tuned in. If this your first time tuning in, salute to you. Please do me a favor. Make sure you hit the sub button. Everybody that's tuned in, please hit the like button. Make sure you hit the bell so you can stay notified when we drop new content. And don't be afraid to leave a comment. If you agree with something, you disagree with something, you want to correct me on something, or if you just want to call me an Uber, let me know in the comments. Just make sure you keep it a C note. And please, please, please share this video with someone that likes to talk sports and entertainment just like you so that we can all talk that talk together. Funniest thing I've seen so far this week has to come from the Washington football team. They got players going to Coach Ron Rivera complaining about the new offensive coordinator, Eric B. Enemy saying he's being too harsh, too intense. Really? What in the Pop Warner is going on here, people? Can somebody help me understand it? Because this is what I call loser's mentality. They're playing in the best football league in the world, getting paid to do it. Even the worst uh, paid players are getting paid better than regular workers. And you don't want to put no work in. You don't want to work on your craft at all. You just want to sit around and collect a check. Really? Washington fans, this why y'all haven't won since Mark Rippon. I'm just keeping it a C note. And we all know Eric B. Enemy, he wants to be a head coach. We all know he went to Washington to get out of Andy Reid's shadow. He wants to show the league that he should be considered as an NFL coach. He's off to a rough start here. Messing with these jokers, he messing around, never be a head coach in the league. I'm just keeping it a C note. I'm praying something good comes out of this. Pause. But me personally, if I'm the coach, if I'm the GM, if I'm the guy that's making the calls, I'm getting rid of them jokers that's talking about he's too intense. That just means you don't want to put in no work. You just want to sit around and steal my money. I'm just keeping it a C note. Now, I recently watched the Jake Paul versus Nate Diaz fight. And I don't know why I watched the fight. I mean, I am a fan of boxing, but I'm not a fan of the Paul brothers. Don't got nothing against them. Just not a fan of them. Not a fan of UFC, so I could care less for Nate Diaz. But I watched the fight. Not only was the fight horrible, but I realized they're hustling us. I don't know who's pulling the strings, who's the mastermind, who's the culprit, whatever you want to call it. I don't know if it's Matchroom, The Zone. I don't know if it's Dana White. I don't know if it's a dark horse like a Vince McMahon. But they are hustling us. They have started a a celebrity boxing league, this UFC edition, and we don't even dig it. They're taking old fighters from UFC and just putting them in the ring to fill arenas out. Fights are horrible. Nate Diaz, I've never seen him fight, but I was told he's vicious in the octagon. That boy got in that fight with Jake Paul. He looked like he ain't never thrown a punch in his life. My money would be on a guy like Vince McMahon. This has Vince McMahon written all over it. This is not boxing. This is entertainment. I'm just keeping it a C note, but I might be wrong. I know at this at this stage where I'm at after seeing that Jake Paul fight, I probably won't even watch this Tyson Fury fight coming up. I'm just keeping it a C note. Shout out to Darrell Revis, Revis Island. Recently inducted into the Hall of Fame. Salute to that boy. He is the definition of a lockdown cornerback. I'm just keeping it a C note. 
But I want to ask everybody, where does Darrell Revis rank on your all-time cornerback list? And I don't want to hear top 10, top 5, top 3. No, give me an exact spot. Where do you have Darrell Revis on your all-time cornerback list? Keep it a C-note. Let me know. During his speech, he had an interesting quote in which he said, Jordan is to Kobe what Prime is to Revis Island. And I found that interesting because we got a lot of people that say Kobe surpassed Jordan. Kobe was better than Jordan. I don't agree with them people, but we got people to say that. Now, I've been on the record for saying it before, and I've been called many Ubers for saying it. But I'll say it again. In this case, I believe Darrell Revis surpassed Deion Sanders. Darrell Revis is better cornerback than Prime. I'm just keeping it a C-note. Now, don't get me wrong. Prime ain't no slouch. But Darrell Revis was different. Not only is he going to lock down the whole side of the field he's on, it's just like quarterbacks come into the game when he's on the opposite side, and they don't play that good. I mean, Dion don't get burnt like that or nothing, but you still get guys getting off on him. Pause. Nobody was getting off on Revis. I'm just keeping it a C-note. I think Dion gets a lot of love because he was jumping routes, a lot of picks, a lot of antics and all of that. But Darrell Revis is better than Deion Sanders. And if you played fantasy football back in the Darrell Revis area, you already know no matter who your number one wide receiver was, you was putting them on the bench if they had to play against the Jets. That's just real rap. I've never seen nobody do nothing like he was doing. Holding dudes 3 to 19, 3 for 36. And I don't mean one or two weeks. Revis constantly did that week in, week out. The Revis Island thing is real. I don't know if you want to call me an Uber or not, but I got Darrell Revis as a better cornerback than Deion Sanders. I have Darrell Revis as the greatest cornerback ever. I'm just keeping it a C note. Since we talking cornerbacks and the season is right around the corner, I'm going to give you my top 10 cornerbacks coming into the 2023 season. At 10, I'm going James Bradbury, straight out of the Philadelphia Eagles. He gets busy, had a great year, got brung back. Let's see what they do this year. At 9, I'm going Jamel Dean, Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Now, I know Tampa Bay had a down season, but Jamel Dean got busy. Um, He's my number nine. Number eight, this guy had a great season in 2022. Probably overshadowed because of his teammate. But I'm going DJ Reed. DJ Reed got busy, underrated. I think you guys need to watch out for him. I'm just keeping it a C note. At seven, I'm going Trayvon Diggs. Dallas Cowboys, he's definitely gotten busy. He's a highlight reel waiting to happen. So he's definitely my number seven. Six, I'm going Denzel Ward, Cleveland Browns. I think Denzel Ward sort of had a down year last year. I believe he will bounce back. I believe he will be top five at the end of the season, barring injury. But right now, I got him six. At five, I'm going Jahir Alexander. He had a down year, got burnt a lot, a lot of touchdowns on him. But he's still a top five cornerback in the league. At four, I'm going Darius Slay. Darius Slay is another player that he is overlooked tremendously. Darius Slay got busy. He held it down for that defense. He's a ball hawk, Halls. He's my number four. At three, I'm going Marshawn Lattimore, New Orleans Saints. Another guy that has been getting busy since he's been in the league. Another guy that may have had a little down year, 
compared to the when when you're saying down years, these guys are having great years. So when they don't make the same amount of tackles or interceptions, we look at it as a down year. But Marshawn Lattimore, my number three. Number two, I'm going Patrick Sertan, straight out of the Denver Broncos. He gets busy. Another highlight real waiting to happen. He's my number two. My number one, I tried hard. I pause. I do not like putting rookies in the top slot. But I didn't have a lot to work with. Pause. Every list I'm looking at has Sauce Gardner as the best cornerback in the league. I couldn't even find a, 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 a clear number two on anybody else's list. I'm not even going front and try to hate on that kid. He got busy last year. Sauce Gardner, right now I got him as the best cornerback in the league. What's your thoughts on it? Keep it a C note. Do you agree with me? Do I need an Uber? Let me know. Matter of fact, just let me know. What's your top 10 cornerbacks coming into the 2023 NFL season? Keep it a C note. Let me know. Top 100 list. The NFL just did their top 100 list. Uh, it's based off of the players voting. It's a lot of people criticizing these lists and all that. I ain't going to lie. At first, I was criticizing the list. Like, wait, how is this person this? But it's based off of last year. I get it, right? So I'm not going to be upset with it. Um, but I want to ask y'all, what's y'all takeaways from the top 100 list? Do you agree with it? Do you disagree with it? Yes, no, keep it a C, no. My takeaway is this, right? Because, again, I agree with it, but I will say this. Those teams that have three and four guys that's on that top 100 list, they better be around at the end of the year when it's time for playoffs and championship games and all of that. These same teams better be around because these NFL players are voting these guys, and I mean, you got three, four guys off one team. If these guys don't make it to the end, man, I'm starting to think these NFL players don't know what the hell they talking about. I'm just keeping it a C note. But shout out Patrick Mahomes. He was number one on the list. First player to be voted number one twice. And again, I agree with it. He got busy, won the Super Bowl, on a bad will and all of that. So salute to him. He definitely deserves it. But again, these teams that got all these guys on this top 100 list, like these San Fran and these Eagles teams, they better be there at the end of the year. Or not these Eagles, these or not these NFL guys, they don't know what the hell they talking about. They just, their opinion is just as good as ours. I'm keeping it a C note. Um, shout out to the New Orleans Saints. They signed Kareem Hunt. I actually think that's a good signing. And listen. A lot of people have called me Ubers. When I said Kareem Hunt was no longer, I mean, not Kareem Hunt. When I said the kid from Alvin Kamara, because I believe Kareem Hunt will take this job. I said Alvin Kamara wasn't top five a couple years ago. He fell out of the top five. People called me Ubers. After that season, all the same people that called me Ubers didn't have him top five no more. Recently, I said he wasn't the top 10 running back anymore. A lot of people called me Ubers. After last year, a lot of people don't have him on their top 10 list. So what I'm saying is I believe Kareem Hunt lucked up, came up with a starting job. I know uh, Kamara is suspended, but even when he come back off suspension, his game been on a decline. I believe Kareem Hunt will take that job and be the start and running back. That's a great signing. Shout out to the Ramley. My Rams boys, they went and brought back John Johnson, the third safety. He left us to go play for uh, Cleveland. He's in his seventh season. John Johnson is one of the guys I thought the, that the Rams should have never got rid of. There's a couple of them guys that I thought they should have never got rid of. Him, Darius Williams, 
It's a couple guys. But, yeah, shout out to the Rams getting John Johnson the third back. That's a major signing on the low. We going to see what's what because preseason is amongst us, people. We got some games coming up. Keep it a C note. Are you watching the NFL preseason this year? Yes, no. Let me know. Are you taking it serious this year, preseason? Yes, no. Let me know. Hey, listen, we got a whole different team, so I'm definitely tuned into the playoffs. I mean, excuse me, the preseason from every game because I need to know who's who and what's what before we get into the season. Before we get out of here, I want to shout out everybody that commented on uh, our recent episode where we were talking uh, from the Gilbert Arenas podcast about James Harden and Robert Ory. Which career would you rather have? And my whole thing is this, right? When we're talking about loser's mentality, this is what I mean with loser's mentality. Because mostly everybody that said they would take James Harden's career over Robert Ory's career also turned around and said if you was the point guard and had to shoot a last second shot and you got Ory open and Harden open, who you passing it to? Everybody said Robert Ory, but they wouldn't want his career. This is what I'm saying, loser's mentality. And, you know, it's not wrong. Some people just is who they are, but money doesn't motivate me. Money shouldn't be the motivating factor. So everybody that said James Harden to me, it shows me that they're about money for one, and they ain't with that team concept. I'm just keeping it a C note. That's just my thoughts. That's why I thought it was a perfect question because the way you answered that question would definitely determine your character. And I don't want to hear all them people that were saying, ah, my family would be better. Come on, man. Stop it. Stop running that movie because them people that said they'd take that 300 mil, most of them ain't thinking about no family. We got to knock it off with the movies, man. My thing is this, like, man, You can't have a loser's mentality. Everything ain't about money. You know what I mean? And that's why everything in this world is kind of diluted now because everything is attached to money. Music is a money play. We just seen Meek Mill say they get paid more money for writing ignorant stuff, rapping ignorant stuff. Everything is about money. Once money is involved, the situation is diluted. So if you'll take that $300 million because Harden was an MVP or he led the league in scoring and there's more money, then that's just who you are. I'm keeping it a C note. I'm about to wrap this episode up. Appreciate everybody for tuning in. Again, if this is your first time tuning in, salute to you. Please do me a favor. Make sure you hit the sub button. Everybody that's tuned in, please hit the like button. Make sure you hit the bell so you can stay notified when we drop new content. Don't be afraid to leave a comment. If you agree with something, you disagree with something, you want to correct me on something, or if you just want to call me an Uber, please let me know in the comments. And make sure that you... Share this video. Please share it with somebody that likes to talk sports and entertainment just like you so that we can all talk that talk together. As always, I am your boy, Brown. Please tell a friend to tell a friend to tell a friend to tell everybody. Keep the seed note. I holla at y'all. This is what I'm feeling like. da 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 Let me tell you what I'm feeling like.